Let's do some news. Today is March 1st, 2019. I am your host, Mike B. I am joined today by chat. Uncle chat now, I guess. Congratulations. <laughs> today we have uh, a number of things to cover. Uh, news stories that date back to ye old times of February 21st. Because I feel like some of these are worth mentioning in the context of some of the other things that we're going to be discussing today. Not a ton of crazy things have happened outside of the layoffs that we'll talk about. Uh, and I guess the THQ thing, which we're going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> it has definitely been an interesting two weeks, though. Refrain from using the word Fortnite this time, guys. Sorry. Sorry for those of you guys watching the live stream. I won't say it twice. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just... But first, but first, first we have to get in. We have to talk a little bit about, <clears throat> we have to talk a little bit about, uh, about the, what's it called here? The, the, the Momo Challenge. The Momo Challenge! Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, the Momo Challenge. Look, we're going to make this quick, all right? <sighs> Fucking, all it is, it's a, first off, it, it's a hoax, right? It's one of those things where... Like the Tide Pod Challenge, it's like, it's the equivalent of, for those of us who were alive before social media ran our lives, which is pretty much everybody here, uh, you know what it's like to be dared to do something, right? It's like, oh, I dare, I dare you to do this thing. I bet you won't do that thing. Do that thing. You're peer pressure, right? You're just like, oh, really? And then you end up like, you know, caving, you end up doing it. So... The Momo Challenge, uh, the Blue Whale Challenge, the um, the Water Bucket Challenge, the Ice Bucket Challenge, the, uh, what was that one with that stupid dance? Everyone's kind of like chilling, not doing anything, and then all of a sudden they're like cutting, they're doing crazy shit. Yeah, like that. The Momo Challenge is basically right up there with that um, in regards to challenges that are, they stem from social media. And they kind of encourage everybody to go and get Harlem Shake. Thank you so much. Uh, and they kind of sit at yeah, the cinnamon challenge, right? It's, it's all, it's the, it's the equivalent of being dared to do something by your peers. And so the Momo challenge is effectively the exact same thing, except that it never actually existed. The rumor was that, uh, like this image that originally showed up on r slash creepy, uh, and, or there's a couple of images actually related to this. It's really good, creepy stuff here, actually. Um, <clears throat> but it actually originally showed up on r slash creepy and then later was, uh, uh, repurposed for the, uh, for the purpose of the Momo challenge. Um, uh, and it was, and the way it was supposed to work is you, you text a WhatsApp, a WhatsApp number and it will send you back a, uh, like a dare of sorts. And it, it's supposed to be like anything from watch a, a scary movie to kill yourself. Right. And I don't know if any kid would be like, oh, wow, Kim, wow, that's a tough one. That's all. I don't know. Oof. But I, I mean, I got to do it, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's probably someone out there that feels that that's potentially an issue that could happen. Right. Um, but the bottom line is it just never happened. Like none of this like it's not real. <laughs> uh, the the this this picture is not real, by the way. As creepy as it was, it's funny because I came across this picture before I realized what the Momo challenge was, um, and I was like, I was like, what the f is this? But everybody reported on it uh, before it, they realized that it was fake. Um, I didn't even. I, I was just like, oh, it's just another trend, whatever. I didn't know it was fake until recently because I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> I was just like, well, whatever. It's oh, it's, oh, that thing, that thing that everybody thought was dumb is fake. Okay, cool. Um, and this is, I mean, this is, uh, this is actually a police um, Facebook page here. Oh, check out photo. Maybe sent it to some people. This is police service of Northern Ireland. Uh, suicide game targeting our kids. It's maybe basically just feels like a bunch of bored. Uh, bored parents on Facebook. I mean, if you notice, we actually did go to Facebook for this particular uh, this particular link. So yeah, it's basically just a bunch of scared parents on Facebook that are getting each other riled up over shit like this and vaccines cause autism and all that shit. So yeah, this is definitely one of those things that uh, that's popped up. And it, I mean, damn good. Somebody said it was actually a Japanese artist, right? Is that right? Hold on, let's scroll up a little bit. Um, do you have the actual source of this uh, this whole thing? What is this, Martha? Uh, Oh, yeah, you do. Cool. That's a good one. That's a good one. Let me grab that. Yeah, so here we go. Sub says a Japanese artist. Um, yeah, wow, that's creepy. It is a creepy image. Like, I was 100% that's nightmare fuel material uh, image there. 
Uh, so, or not image, I guess, like a prop or whatever this thing is. Just, yeah. I shouldn't be surprised as a Japanese dude, though, man, after watching uh, Ringu and uh, uh, what was, uh, there was another one. There was another one that came around at the same time, another franchise that was basically the same thing. Just, they, they make some freaky fucking shit. Um, anyways, yeah, so, good. Good to know. <laughs> Grunge, thank you. That was the other one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there, you, there it is. That's, that's, there's the source right there. I'm glad we got that. But, yeah, that's uh, just, just parents getting themselves into, into a tizzy over nothing. And now we're good. Philip DeFranco come. Phil, Phil DeFranco debunked it. I don't know. Maybe he did. <laughs> oh yeah, not grunge, grudge. That's right. It was grudge, grudge. We're close. We're close. Anyway, so Momo challenge, not a real thing, but I wanted to mention it because I want to put that face on my face for the thumbnail. So I want to make sure we cover that. All right. So that's it for that. Next up, we've got. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we gotta cover shit just so I can get a good thumbnail, guys, all right? Uh, next up, and this is the big story I wanna get to. This is the real thing right here. This is the real shit. All right, so, last week, February 26th, uh, around like 10 a.m. Pacific time, THQ Nordic was like, hey, we're gonna do a, uh, we're gonna do an AMA on, uh, on 8chan. And everybody was like, what? What in the fuck? What in the fuck are you thinking? Like, how is it? Who made this decision? It was just, it was just a, like, right, like, you know those things that happen? You're like, that is a bad idea. That's a bad idea. 8chan. It's like twice as bad as 4chan. It is just one of those things that you just don't do. Um, a chan is is bad enough that it was actually been delisted by Google uh, because of the type of content that they actually had on uh, that they have on the site. Now <clears throat> they they unfortunately really went with it. We're going to talk about this a little bit here. So. Here it is. It says the opportunity was here and we took it. We got approached in a very friendly and polite manner and were assured said person, shout out to Mark, shout, shout out to my boy Mark, said that we'll take care of the nasty stuff. So here we are. And that was how they, what is Natalie Chan? Then? Where is Natalie Chan? <laughs> well, she's just one Chan, right? It's Natalie Chan. So it's just one Chan. So that she's good. She's good. Four chan, like that's going up the scale. Eight chan, even worse. If there's a sixteen chan, I'm sure it's just fucking terrible. Um, but yeah, so they they basically looked at this as, a, as an opportunity to, uh, for whatever reason, uh, their perspective was we see it as an opportunity to just go ahead and just go on and talk to a site, uh, kind of like like Puda saying, uh, oh yeah, it's kind of like Reddit, um, and that's where they're gonna go and host their AMA. Obviously, everybody was just like, what are you doing? Uh, the ratio, as it's been called. Uh, whenever you have a certain number of likes, comments, uh, or retweets, whenever that number is, does not have a balance, you call it the ratio, right? When you see something that has 778 comments uh, and 74 retweets, that means this is something that people are uh, interested in engaging with, but not necessarily telling other folks about. <laughs> <laughs> so that tells you that there is something terribly wrong with uh, uh, with uh, this particular tweet. So yes, this 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 tweet did get ratioed. Um, it's funny that it has so many likes. Actually, it's probably like people just try to save it. I think I even liked one of these things. Try to save this shit uh, for later. But uh, yeah, it's just just not the thing. Not 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 a thing that you do. Uh, that's kind of absurd urge you get to eat a what? Hold on a second. Oh, the, oh yeah, kind of absurd urge you get to eat a booger, but normally people don't. And this guy did. Yeah, it was it was definitely a decision that did not. <sighs> this did not pan out. And so now what ends up happening is they, and I actually have to double check. I may, I, so first off, I went to a Chan to, uh, uh, to get the, uh, uh, to get screenshots for this, for this cast. I want to make sure that I did a good job of censoring them though, <laughs> because, because, all right. So first off, uh, let me actually get all the screenshots loaded up here. Um, let's see one, two, and then, uh, because there's a couple, there's a couple of things that happened in the AMA that just made me feel like, uh, like, I mean, first off, there were like legit questions in there. It wasn't like they went in there and just like basically all started being really shitty people. 
99% of them were shitty people. Others had questions and the dudes answered them. But then they also answered some very questionable things with some very questionable answers. Right? So first off, this is what the front page of the, or well, well, when you go into that particular subreddit, we'll call it right for those of you guys not familiar with the way that it works in, uh, when you go to one of the Chan sites. Um, and so in one of those, uh, in one of those subreddits, uh, this was slash V video games, video game discussion right at the very top, right at the top. There should be like a red flag here. Uh, it's, it's like winner of the 16, 69 <laughs> or, uh, attention, hungry games, trap, shot lollies with a few extra inches. I feel like. Right at the fucking top, there should be like, okay, is this the kind of site that I want to have THQ Nordic, like, just right there. It's like, lollies with a few extra inches and THQ Nordic. That is just, it's just not where you want to put your brand. Just not bad positioning. Uh, and so I can't scroll down on this because this is an image, but you could at least see the bottom here. Um, and so the very first comment was, are they ready? And then the next one is, where are the big titty lollies at? So it was <laughs> already they knew they were like, what the fuck are these guys thinking? Like, and if somebody jumps in, it's like, we're the big, oh, we're just bring it out. Uh, and of course the thread was peppered with, with stuff, right? Um, nothing, nothing, I guess, illegal, right? It was all lolly shit, right? And I don't know, I don't know, you're, you're draw, drawing, whatever, whatever it was, whatever. I, you know, the, the thread was definitely peppered with shit that you don't want your brand associated with. Let's just leave it at that, right? Uh, the next thing is, but here, so here now we get to like the actual answers that were given as uh, from some of the questions we got. Uh, so this one says like, please don't censor any games nor appeal to the social justice crowd. You guys are doing fine as is. And he says, thanks. We'll try to stay that way. Um, and so I, 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 you know, we, I think all of us that play games, like we, we know both sides of this coin, right? We know that there are shitty people out there uh, who, you know, just, they, they want to have games that are tailored for them. Uh, and then we know that there are shitty people on the other side of the coin, of the coin that want to have games tailored towards them. Right. <clears throat> and so, so it's like, okay, so this is uh, uh, Philip here, by the way, responding. He says, thanks. We'll try to stay that way. Uh, and then we go to the next question. Uh, now there's other questions in between where they're asking about various games and all that stuff. Right. I'm leaving those out. Just, I want to just say that they did answer regular questions as well. I'm going through and just picking the ones that I felt were just a little questionable. Um, this one says, why 8chan of all the places? Was it your decision to come here or someone else suggested you to organize a Q&A here? Was there someone who was against it? And then the, the answer here is, I have no fucking idea. Mark seems like a really nice guy though. <laughs> why could this happen to Tencent? I know, I know. Jesus. Um, and then uh, we go to the next one here. This was, uh, oh yeah, this one, this one popped up. So this one, you could read this one probably pretty clearly up here in the corner here. Uh, this guy says, guys behave, and he has this image here. And then, and then uh, this guy responds, says, that could be from one of our upcoming games. <sighs> and so, oh, we'll get to this in a second. Uh, and so there's, there's, there's some, there's definitely a couple of like questionable things that were said in here where it doesn't necessarily look like they 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 approach this with the intent of um like they apologize and say, oh we didn't really understand it but they kind of played along in some cases and i'm not sure if they necessarily went into it like looking at like oh let's just kind of play along and answer some of these questions or what but i did go to uh the the guy the guy who actually posted the the uh, the apology which we'll get to in a second um philip brock i went to his page and he's one of the ones that's actually answering a lot of the questions in here um and i took a look at his uh his linkedin and i noticed in his bio i'll read it to you guys here uh it says uh in a world that has its fair share of corporate bullshit and perfect high gloss pr i guess it never hurt anyone to stick out of that goo a bit without making it look forced uh and I feel like there's a certain strange, like there's a, there's kind of a strange edginess, like that just really not necessary in your LinkedIn profile to put something like this <laughs> in a world that has its fair share of corporate bullshit and perfect high gloss. Yeah, that just sounds really just too edge lord for me, man. Just too, just a little bit too much edge. Uh, and so, but this is, I mean, this is Philip Brock. This is the guy who, you know, he's the uh, director of, uh, of PR marketing for uh, THQ Nordic. He's the one that approved doing the actual, uh, um, uh, do the actual uh, uh, AMA there. 
And it, and then like seeing seeing that this is what he has on it on his and it's just like I was like okay like obviously like this guy is probably a bit of an edge lord himself, um and yeah unqualified for PR PR right exactly yeah it's it's just it doesn't really read to me like somebody that necessarily needs to be in a PR position. Um, there were a couple of issues that there were a couple of things that sprung up. I don't have screenshots unfortunately because I was blocked, uh, but there is a couple. Uh, there's like oh, some the couple folks that are like actually piping up piping up. They're like, oh, we need to we need to call on uh, all these de- all these other developers and all these other you know game publishers that have uh, contracts and deals and partnerships with THQ Nordic and have them sever their shit now because this is this is terrible. Um, and I felt like that was a little bit too far because just in my like kind of just going through and just kind of pulling all this stuff out and looking at the details here, like I feel like Philip is the issue and Philip is probably the one that needs to. I don't know, sensitivity training or de edge lording or something. I don't dulling. Maybe is that what it's called? Um, but yeah, definitely some of that. I feel, I feel like he was de- certainly the person that was probably at the center of organizing this whole thing. Uh, and there's no need to call for the heads of innocent fucking people who probably work somewhere else in THQ Nordic simply because one dude probably made, I'm certain it's probably one, maybe two people that made a really fucking stupid judgment call and then like went with it. Just really, really strange, a strange, a strange, strange event. And then they actually, uh, they, they came out later on. Phil's is probably going to have a LinkedIn update to his job. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Very interesting how old this guy is. Well, it doesn't say, it doesn't say on here, there's no picture or anything like that. Um, usually what you could do, and this is not his actual LinkedIn page, it took a screenshot, but uh, usually what you could do is you could go through and see uh, his work history to kind of make out like how old he is or something, you know, like when they say graduated high school in, you know, 1995 or something like that, it's like, okay, this guy's like 44 years old or some shit like that. Uh, so yeah, you could kind of, you could draw lines that way. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily the issue. I don't think it's an, it's an age thing. I think it's more of just somebody who is out of touch. I think it's two things. I think on one hand, it's somebody that is, um, I feel like he's, he's clearly out of touch with just like general social workings of, uh, like the current social climate with like, you know, with the internet. Right. Uh, and on the other hand, just like completely out of touch with, with the chance, just completely out of touch with the chance, uh, that he doesn't know. Uh, I probably knew what 4chan was, but how the fuck do you know what A-chan is? I mean, I'm sorry. I, I, I probably doesn't know what A-chan is, but at least if he knows what 4chan is, he should know. Like you wouldn't, no sane company would be like, yeah, I'll hold an AMA on 4chan, let alone 8chan. <laughs> so I don't understand. It's just, it just, it's just something that just does not quite, uh, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't quite work out. The amount of time that we went from having the original tweets saying that they're going to start doing the AMA to actually coming out and saying, I personally agree to this AMA without doing my proper due diligence to understand the history of the con- and the controversy of the site and do not, cond- I do not condone child pornography, white supremacy, or racism in any shape or form. I am terribly sorry for the short sightedness of my decision and promise to be far more vigorous in my assessment of these activities in the future. This is not about being edgy. Oh, there's that word. Uh, this blew up and I very much regret to, to have done it in the first place. Philip Brock, PR Marketing Director, THQ Nordic, Vienna, Austria. 90 minutes! 90 minutes that from the from the beginning to the end of this insane insane uh just fiasco just weird the <laughs> idea i'm not edgy i just like just look at my just look at my linkedin bio Psh, do i seem like an edgy person to you oh man his boss slapped him on the wrist yeah well i'm, I'm genuinely curious i am actually very curious if he's going to continue to be employed there only because this is a pretty serious thing. Uh, and to have your brand associated with this and then knowing that the person who did this is still so and having people know that that person who did this is still associated with your brand is just bad. It's one of those things where it's like, even though maybe it was an innocent mistake, it's not innocent because it takes two and a half seconds to Google what the site is. And if this person did any actual due diligence, then this would not have happened. So it's, it's something that it's something that could have been avoided. He didn't do his job. And because of his gross negligence, he 
Uh, he, he made the brand look, look really fucking bad in a 90 minute span and like permanently damaged the brand in some respects, uh, within that amount of time. I don't want to say permanently, but no, not permanently. Sorry. Obviously, eventually we're going to forget about this whole shit and laugh about it in like 10 years. Uh, but, uh, but still right now, <laughs> things aren't looking good for THQ Nordic from a, uh, from, from their social standing level. Doesn't sound like you had any idea what the chant was. Yeah. Rather that. Uh, he didn't think the backlash would be like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, thing is, no one else on the comm team did any work either, so it's so it's so freaking bizarre. Well, there's only, there was three people that participated in this. It was, uh, um, uh, Philip, uh, and, like, two other guys that are actually, their comments here. So, Philip, da 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 Fabian, and Reinhardt. And it's funny because Fabian's comment is, I think, the most hilarious because he says, why 8chan of all places? And he says, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> But Mark seems like a really nice guy, though. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. My man. Yeah, but dude, Mark. Yeah, it's it's just even even when even this guy is like doesn't know, you know, that it was someone that was just like, oh, just why don't we just go and do this? Uh, do this AMA. He was like, why? Well, fuck it. Whatever. Shout out to Mark. Exactly. But one thing I found interesting is I'm sure somewhere people are like still boy like still trying to boycott THQ uh, uh, Nordic. I'm sure there's people still like, oh, boycott, boycott all their games, right? Which I think is a little silly because then you're jeopardizing more people's jobs. But in the same breath, those same people will be like, oh, I'm so sad that Arena, Arena and I got all these people laid off and EA laid all these people off and all these layoffs are happening, but let's get more people laid off. Yeah, fuck you. Uh, so one thing I thought was pretty interesting is right when this whole fiasco started, I went and took a screenshot of their uh of their uh, their actual social their social numbers uh and so they're actually sitting at 75,882 uh followers here and then today I went and took a screenshot this is only a few days later and they're sitting at 76,000 76.9 something so they actually gained a, uh <laughs> 1100 followers over this whole thing so it actually I, 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 I don't know what, why that is. I don't know why <laughs> they gained, but I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of just like, yeah, people like to watch shit shows. Like, are, I, I guess, are these 1100 people that are just like, you know, what? I kind of want to see where this thing goes or are they, are they, are they, is it just a mix of things? It might just be a mix of things. You know I mean? Was I, wait, am I following them right now? <laughs> I guess I was not following them before I saw them on a, uh, let's see. Am I following? I'm not following them, but the fact that I didn't know tells you that, yeah, like there are probably people that are out there that are just kind of like, I want to watch this shit show and they just go and like follow it. Yeah. Because why not? You don't know the, the, what's the next thing going to, what's the next crazy thing they're going to do? Um, what is the HN is hardly the worst place on the, on the, the hinterwebs place against bad press because it's supported gamer games. So people try to associate with some awful things. Uh, well, corpse actually, uh, if you want to actually, if you wanna if you wanna go to the site right now, uh, it will take you like two and a half seconds to find shit that you, made, that, uh, you would not want associated with your brand. And if you disagree with that, then I'm sorry, but you're wrong. <laughs> it's it's definitely not a place that you want to. I mean, first off, it's probably not a place that the average person wants to go to, right? Uh, but also, it's uh, not something that you you definitely don't want your brand associated with that. Um. I'm high follow them now. Most see what the fuck up next. This is, what what are they gonna fuck up next? I'm serious. Like, yeah, they, it, it, you, people are probably just jumping on board to see what the hell happens. Um, people that usually shop boycott usually either weren't gonna buy anything, and that you know what? That's a thing. I will agree with that uh, uh, to a degree. Uh, I, I do agree that there are people out there. I hundred percent believe this. There are people out there who get like super fucking enraged over like shit that they normally would not even give a shit about. Right? It's kind of like, oh shit. That's that's something that I could go and get really upset about on Twitter. I'm gonna do that, even though I'll I never bought any of their games, played any of their stuff, or did any kind of support or follow any of them before this. I see an opportunity to be pissed off about something, and they will jump on it Just totally. Um, uh, yeah, you're right. It's not a place you want to associate your brand with. Uh, it's an AI on board, so it's a bit much for most. Yeah, yeah. Um, people still buy EA games, so very few actually follow through boycotting anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so or the argument also is that oh, it just goes to show that. Uh, that people who, um, when, when sales aren't affected by things, it's like, oh, so the people that are getting outraged about things actually don't even buy the games to begin with. So, cause sales, uh, are, are completely not impacted by any of these things. Um, 
Uh, it's so weird. I don't think everyone thinks badly of, of this. Yeah, I don't think I don't. So, so that's a thing. Overall, I don't think that this is something like I, I, I definitely don't believe that any kind of boycott or any kind of, um, you know, shunning social like shunning of THQ Nordic needs to take place at all. Because, I mean, again, it's a big company, and like this is a handful of people that made that made this decision. Uh, but uh, I do, I do feel like something needs to happen with the with with the people that are involved with this. Now, is it any of my fucking business what happens? No, it's really not, right? Uh, so really, I'm at the end here. <laughs> I don't, I don't really have, uh, I, I don't really have a horse in this race. Uh, I, I've. I've done my part. I pointed out that the guy seems like an edge lord, and you know what? If he gets fired, then then great. If if he's still on board, then hopefully they they uh, they sat down, had a really good talk with him about you know making stupid ass edge lord decisions like that. Ah oh, man. So yeah, that was uh, uh, that was an interesting day to say the least. Does Reddit still have space ticks? Yeah, brands associated with Reddit. No, well, no, Reddit is that's that's actually something that uh, you can't compare the two corps. You can't. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna go down this path with you uh, because right now we're in the middle of a show and uh, that is a discussion to correct that line of thinking. Um, I think gamers forget that the majority of people buying games know nothing about the games industry. They only know they want Call of Duty is out. Yeah, exactly. And that's as far as it goes. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. Especially with the bigger, like like someone mentioned FIFA, Hans uh, mentioned FIFA. Uh, that's a great example. Like FIFA is, is such a huge, huge, huge uh, franchise, like the biggest game in the world, really, that that you just would not, like, no matter how big of a shitstorm you stir up about the game online or on Reddit, somewhere where a game of that size, uh, no matter how big you think Reddit is, would actually have no uh, like no impact whatsoever on sales it's just it's just yeah it's 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 one of those things the so moving on let me see uh reddit says they're removing bad servers anyway for exactly this reason oh yeah 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 they quarantine and they do all that stuff absolutely um let's see so so later on this that uh, we're shifting gears we're going somewhere else all right we're gonna leave thq nordic alone to our own devices next we're gonna switch to endemic some of you guys may or may not know who Endemic is. They make a game called uh, Plague, Plague Inc. Plague Inc. is uh, it's basically like a disease simulator. Uh, I want to say, and some of you guys could probably correct me if I'm wrong. I've not, I've not actually played it myself. Uh, I want to say it's kind of like Risk, but for diseases. <laughs> is that is that pretty much on? Is that pretty much correct? Uh, I want to say it's kind of like playing Risk, but uh, or like where you basically you, you simulate like disease spread or something like that, right? And you try to like achieve um full global like takeover or something like that right not really uh well everyone says it's a great game but but, but what is uh what is like the design disease to kill the world yeah yeah so okay so not really like risk okay so i'm trying to think of like a world domination type of thing where but in this case you're using uh germs and disease and all that stuff as elements are yeah. so that's i'm not saying it is like risk it's not like like that but um in terms of like taking over everything so anyways um they had a petition. They actually, uh, they actually have the only successful change.org petition. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Actually, I just made that part up. Um, where they said, "Whoops, if they get ten thousand signatures, they will add a specific new anti-vaxxer scenario to Plague Inc." And I thought that was super interesting. Uh, because it is something that can potentially be viewed a, a, as a sort of plague or some kind of you know pandemic. Yeah, it's it really is. It it totally is actually. Uh, some people say it's hardcore mode. Some people say it's easy mode. <laughs> it's it's one of those things that I guess the, the gameplay will speak for itself. Uh, and so they actually ended up getting okay. Thank you, buddy. Uh, they actually ended up getting twenty two thousand and fifty one as of right now. Uh, signatures on this thing. And they followed up and they said, they said that, all right, all right, you spoke, we listened. Uh, Nuri's very happy to hear that we're going to start figuring out anti vaxxers soon. He's dying to try and get inside their heads. So this is, um, this, I, I feel like this is one of the coolest, like, real world integrations into, like, a game, you know, like, 
we've 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 had we have games that have like real world integra- integrations with like various things but you know whenever they try to like bring politics in it's like you know they'll, they'll have like uh um there was a there was a game that uh, uh imagine like a game that basically had like uh like trump was like the bad guy or something like that it's like oh my god i get the like come on dude like give me out of my, get out of my face like usually when you have like these real world real world like crossovers it's usually pretty tacky like someone trying to push an agenda or something like that but in this case, and, and here's the thing, I'm speaking about this from the perspective of somebody who believes that vaccinations work, right? So I'm pretty sure there's probably some anti-vaxxers out there who probably think, oh, you're really going to do this? This is a tacky crossover for real life stuff. <laughs> so so maybe I'm biased. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm biased. Uh, but I mean, look at right now, right now what's going on with the measles, right? Like the measles is happening in like Oregon or something like that. And they actually, they, they stem from people, a uh, group of people who didn't vaccinate their kids for whatever whatever reason um just was it oregon or was it washington um somewhere north of of, of me <laughs> politics and games usually dis- uh, d- divisive so you're gonna upset half your audience but this is quite interesting yeah it's true yeah exactly like there's there's ways to incorporate real life things but most of the time it's handled it's, it's very ham-fisted it's kind of feels like uh eh. um Washington prior to Hawaii. So it was Washington. It was Washington. This is both. It's both. Okay. So, so this is, this is, this, this is actually going to be awesome. Um, I don't know. They didn't necessarily follow up. I don't think they have a follow up or anything where they said they're going to have any particular, uh, release date or anything like that. Um, but I mean, that's rebel. Uh, yeah, they've only posted this so far. So he's standing over science wire. Remain. Okay. Actually, they might have an update here. Let's go and pop it open and take a look. Uh, so it says it's been a busy week here at Office Zero. We're working on bringing new content to Rebel Inc. and a bumper, da da da, and then petition, and then da da da, and then they said we're currently working out how how anti vaxxers will actually work in game. We have a few ideas that we're trying out and running them through our algorithms. The biggest challenge is that if everyone in Play Inc.'s global simulation suddenly stopped getting vaccinated, then it would be a very easy game to win. It's amazing that six years after the game's release, there's still such a huge and passionate community for Plague Inc. It means a lot to us, and it makes uh, a lot of fun to keep working on it and updates like this. So yeah, they're working on it right now. They're trying to figure out basically how to calculate the spread, right? Like, what does it mean? Like, how do they, how are they going to actually like, you know, how, how does this disease spread? Is it a social disease where it's like, you have to wait for like socially for ideas to catch on. And then those ideas kind of flourish into actual actions. Uh, you know, it's like, cause, cause everybody starts somewhere, right? Like you're, you could be just a normal, normal parent or a normal, like, you know, whatever adult. And you're like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of one. My, my friends say that vaccines cause autism in kids. I don't give a fuck. I have kids. And then like five years later, you have kids. You're like, oh shit, wait, do vaccines cause, yeah, you know, cause autism in kids? That's crazy. Um, and so it's it's just it's it's. I'm looking forward to this update, even though I don't play Plague Inc. Right, just to see how they calculate and how it works. Uh, Mises outbreak in uh, Vancouver, BC area as well. Multiple schools in Canada are now going to require evidence of vaccination for adults. I don't understand why. I mean, so when, when I was younger and they still do it today, but you, you used to require, or I say used to, because clearly it's not the case everywhere. You used to have, remember that little yellow card that you used to have where it would actually show you what your, um, what your vaccinations were and if they're up to date. And if you didn't have your vaccinations up to date, if your yellow card was not filled out, then you couldn't go to school. Like that was a thing. But apparently in some areas, uh, all over the world, apparently it's, it's not a thing. And, and, you know, you say, I, I, I say, I, you know, I remember when I was a kid and I had that, but Declan has one too. And he's six. When we put him into, into kindergarten, we had to take, we had to take that little yellow sheet to school. So that way they knew that, uh, that he was up to date on all his vaccinations and everything. But apparently I, I don't know what happens if you. If you don't get it done, can you just say, oh, you know what? There's actually the other thing, too, where they get doctors permissions to not get it for whatever reason by these doctors who apparently are frauds. Um, so that's something, you know, they get like a pass or something. Oh, this kid can have it because blank. You know, there is there is there is definitely. I, I don't know of any particular cases where this has happened, but I'm certain that in the grand scheme of things, some kids probably did not take to a vaccination well. Either they had issues, probably like actually the body had issues with, uh, you know, use, uh, uh, absorbing and uh, I guess reappropriating the vaccination for use uh, or something. But um, but but that percentage is so small that it does not apply. But for some reason, the, just the thought that this could happen is enough to make people come up with all these crazy reasons why they don't necessarily need to, you know, vaccinate their child. Ah. <sighs> 
Uh, it's a thing in Cali. Yeah, exactly. The yellow card is is it's is everywhere. It's still everywhere today. Um, I have like a sting of eating sticky things. Um, it's still a thing in college. Okay, I didn't know it's actually still a thing in college. Uh, they have to get a religious exception, but many places don't allow that. Yeah, they, they should not. Yeah, religious exemptions should 100% not. It's not a fucking science. <laughs> Religion is not a fucking science, man. <laughs> it just, it is not. So, it, yeah, that, the fact that that even exists, uh, yeah, I've seen that. Like, the fact that it even exists, that you could get, you know, oh, my religion prevents me from doing blank. It's like, well, then your religion should have died off many years ago. <laughs> uh, people who can't be vaccinated for medical reasons are reliant upon herd immunity. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's the kids who can't take vaccines who depend on the rest of us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So as I'm saying, it's like, it's, it's one of those things that uh, such a small percentage of kids who can't get the vaccines or whatever vaccine it might be for, right? There's like MMR, there's, um, the, there's, I can't even name another one. <laughs> chickenpox. Isn't chickenpox now like a vaccination? Um, yeah, I want to say it is because, because the way we used to get vaccinated for chickenpox was if one of your friends had chickenpox, you were forced to go and play with them until you got chickenpox. And then that was it. Then you're vaccinated. <laughs> and now I think there's actually like a, like a, I think Declan actually has like a vaccine that they gave him that just flat out just gave it to him. Um, and it was fine. So <laughs> it was, I, I, I distinctly remember being like, my parents were like, oh, hell yeah, go play with Josh. I want to play with Josh. <laughs> like, no, you want to play with Josh. And then next thing I know, Jello and 7 Up for a week. <laughs> because I had the chicken pie. What was it like, malto meal or something? Like, what did they put? It was like some kind of like a, uh, I used to, have to take a, I had to take a bath in like some kind of uh, powder, like in, in the, in the pool, in the bath water. I, I, I remember these things because I was so upset that I got this stupid thing from my friend. Oatmeal. Oh, was it just oatmeal? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, throughout third grade there was two or three kids at a time with chicken pox yeah you just that's that's the a vino oatmeal bath that's what it was thank you jesse who has no life thank you um yeah scars from it yeah that's probably why they they decided you know well first off like intentionally infecting your kid with with something is is probably not something you necessarily want to do uh as a regular thing you know it's like oh yeah you 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 get a kid you teach him how to walk you uh you eventually he starts getting dressed by himself in the morning and then you go you go and you get him sick <laughs> you don't really want to necessarily make that part of your team but we did it for years for decades actually it's the way it was hey josh has uh chicken pox why don't you go hang out with him coughing spots all over his face fuck ah <sighs> you never had the pox really I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if like the, the thing about, you know, if you have chicken pox when you're, um, uh, when you're older, it's actually like deadlier than if you had when you're a kid. I don't know if there's any truth to that necessarily. I know that if you have chicken pox when you're old, old, just like any other sickness when you're super old, then yeah, it might be, uh, it might be a health issue, but like me right now, if I got chicken pox, I feel like I might be able to handle it. Maybe. Um, pox as an adult can make you sterile. Oh, well. <laughs> adult chicken pox called shingles. Oh, there you go. Well, price cut coming right in. Thank you, price cut. Um, let's see. So, moving on. We had some layoffs this past, uh, uh, th these past couple weeks. Past month, actually. It's, it's been a month of layoffs. And... The first one, I feel like kind of flew under the radar a little bit, maybe, but I also was personally disconnected because I was, I was out of town. So, um, I didn't, I didn't know, I don't know necessarily if, if, if this was, uh, an article that, or this was a thing that kind of caught on everyone was talking about. Everybody was talking about arena net and everything because I'm part of that or community, I'm part of that circle, right? Like a lot of you guys probably have seen my arena net or my Guild Wars 2 videos. Um, that might've been how you found me, but so I've st I'm still like involved in that community by virtue of the people that I follow online, right? On Twitter. And so that seemed like a bigger deal than this one, because in this case, this was, uh, EA and, uh, was it, was it, uh, Australia, they laid off 40 to 50 people. Now this is 40 to 50 people, right? It's, it doesn't seem like it's a lot, but According to the Gamers Unite, uh, the union, Gamers Unite organization, they say that the 40 to 50 effectively makes up 10% of the total Australian 
games development industry, which I thought that was a very interesting number because Australia is, it's not, it's not a tiny little island. Australia is fucking huge. Australia has got lots of people on it. Uh, for 40 to 50 to be 10% of their, of Australia. And I don't know if this number is true. Again, I'm just quoting what was written here. Uh, but that seems insane that, that the development, the game development community and our industry in Australia is so small. And then for them to take a hit like this and to lose so much, uh, of their, uh, um, of, of, of people working in the industry, that's pretty significant. So these guys, they made uh, real racing one, two, and three, and I think they're working on Sims Mobile. Uh, and they were working on real racing four. These are mobile games, uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why it didn't pop up for me. Uh, it didn't really pop up for probably some of you guys because they focus primarily on mobile games. But I did want to mention it because it does because because this kind of ties into all the other stories I have of people getting let go. Um, that. You know, just kind of feel. I just want to try and drive home that this is that this is it is a season of people getting laid off here. Uh, Australia's population is 24 million. Australia has a non existent dev scene, much more done in New Zealand. Um, most of Australia's empties, most East Coast. Oh, well, I mean, that that the same thing could be said for um, for the states, albeit I would argue, and with this is without any kind of actual knowledge, I would argue that the inner area of Australia is emptier than the inner area of uh, of the United States for sure. I feel like the United States does have plenty of people across, you know, the center uh, center of it, though. But but, you know, in, in, in pretty much every continent, the uh, the uh, the port cities are going to have all the population. Um, but still, there's still like quite a few people there. It's not it's not like, you know, oh, it's a small island of like, you know, a million folks. Uh, I think that percentage is is entirely because of not many major studios located in Australia and lots of people that get into it likely relocate to N.A. I wonder how much of this is tied into the um, maybe none of it really, but like into prices of games because prices of games in Australia is like insane right now, um, or like has always been that way. Like a fifty dollar game here in the states would cost like eighty dollars or something like that in uh, in Australia. And I wonder if it's because I mean I, I know it's not like directly hand in hand, but I wonder looking at the industry as a whole, where the studios are located, where the publishers are located, where the actual manufacturers. Uh, that actually pr package products and everything are located like uh, and then of course how that ties into lobbying right like if there's not a big games industry in Australia then there's not a whole lot of money to throw at uh, at a government to basically lobby for better laws and less taxes or whatever import taxes and fi fees and fines and all that shit uh, for a game. Uh, yeah, so like Price Guy says, it's because of extra costs of importing and taxes. Exactly. So, so here in the states, like we could we could lobby for you know lower costs, you know, lower lower imports and taxes and all that stuff. Not that we'll get it, but still, we could at least try. Uh, and if if there's only four to five thousand total game developers in uh, uh, in Australia, that's not a whole lot of money that you can just throw at something. They would have to rely on so on, on an outside source, you know, like. EA or uh, Activision Blizzard or something like that. Um, let's see. Uh, importing taxes on digital development. Well, they, the people are still paying like crazy prices. So I'm guessing so. I don't know how that works. I honestly don't know how that works. I just know that there's no reprieve from the amount of money that people have to pay if you're living in Australia for a fucking game. Um, Team Cherry is in Australia. Yeah, well, that, yeah, there's, there's, that's probably, they're probably making up half of the total <laughs> total games industry out there. Um, oh, what is the ad? This is a fake sex doctor who conned the media into publicizing his bizarre research on suicide, butt fisting, and bestiality. We're going to not click on that one. What the fuck? Kotaku? <laughs> that's weird. Um, and so the other one, this one is, uh, this one hits a little closer to home. Obviously, because as I mentioned, it's Guild Wars. Uh, so Bellevue Game Studio Arena Net, developer of Guild Wars, lays off 143, which was uh, ends up being like a third of their uh, of their actual uh, employee base here. So, so pretty significant amount of people that uh, that were laid off of uh, of this. Nobody that. I know, or at least nobody that I know that has said that they were let go. Uh, I, I may have missed a tweet, but 
Like this is a pretty big deal, and it, because this this just stems from the fact that I mean, like Price Cut says, he says, you know, do people still play Guild Wars? The answer is yes, but it's it's not as popular as it was, and even even in their own thing, they they in their own comments about it, they said that there's just you know here it is, it's like we where we are uh, where we are is not sustainable and is going to and is not going to set us up for future success, uh, and then over here da, 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 it says. Live game business revenue is declining, which is Guild Wars 2 and any other property they have. Uh, any other property they have, because I can't even think of one. Uh, as our franchises age, D delays in development on PC and mobile have created further drains against our revenue projects, while our operating costs in the West have increased. So, it's it's just, I mean, he's right. As as the franchise a uh, ages, you know, like Corpse, you say Guild, Guild Wars had a successful last expansion. They they can very well have a great expansion, but just given the natural decline, and we see it with like World of Warcraft, right? It's like you know, as as the game gets older, fewer and fewer fewer people play. Like no expansion is going to bring back some folks, and as time goes on, you know more, that that number of people that will not go back, regardless of what you put in the game, just gets you know it gets bigger, and so more and more people are going to leave and just never come back. Um, They've had I I've read that the content they 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 put into the work that they put into uh their expansions have been really good uh, overall like the living story stuff and everything I've heard that stuff was like really well received, um, they had a really hard time keep the game updated with good content over there. Okay, so that that part I don't I don't agree with, but then again I don't play the game, uh, but but what I've heard is that this their updates have been great, uh, is doing fine. It's the two unannounced project Arena Net was working on. Guild Wars 2 is doing fine. Yeah, so, but still, though, Guild Wars 2 doing fine, but not enough to support any other project. That's still a problem, because as a company, you need to diversify, right? So you're going to need to, um, you're going you're gonna to absolutely need to have a game that can allow you the flexibility of creating something else, so that way, when that game's popularity wanes, you can uh, uh, rely on another source of revenue income. Um, this is... This is like what Riot's doing. Look at Riot and League of Legends, right? Riot and League of Legends. Like, they literally only have League of Legends, <laughs> right? I think they have nothing else. They have League of Legends and, like, that's it. <laughs> and so, but they, but they've had tons of games that uh, uh, they've, they've canned. Projects that they've started, they've canned. But because of the popularity of League of Legends, they, um they're able to expand and kind of at least try. And so that's, so now looking at Guild Wars 2, like this is, this is a big problem. If, if they're saying that they don't have the money to attempt another project because the projects they currently have that they had on the side were too draining because the main project that was pulling in the money is no longer pulling in the money, then this to me sounds like the beginning of the end for ArenaNet. And I hate to say that, but that's what, that's what it reads like to me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a thing. It's, it's a thing that, uh, it just doesn't look good. Uh, Ryzen making other games for years. Uh, yeah, no, they have. I mean, I, 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 I know personally that they've been working on things back when I used to work in, uh, uh, you know, with Lol King and everything. Like, yeah, like I know they were working on shit and they just can it. Like if it doesn't work out for them, they're just like, eh, we'll just can it. And the problem is I feel that like Riot's issue is like, as, as they, you know, <laughs> As riots, you know, as time goes on, the the hype, like for them to announce another game, like people are gonna have such high expectations for that game because in their minds, they're gonna think they've been working on this for years and years and years, way longer than where they probably were. Because yeah, they were working on games, but they sh they shit canned everything. Uh, they did buy uh, that st yeah, Stonehurst City Builder. That was a really great little game. They did buy uh, that studio. I I want to say the follow up to that was that nothing happened <laughs> because because nothing happened that we could see. Uh, yeah, there was there was you know they were talking about fighting game and everything. Whatever whatever the next thing that Riot does has to be amazing. Uh, but. Riot again. Riot is in a position where they can do those kinds of things, whereas ArenaNet has effectively said today, uh, or you know, when they do these layoffs, that uh, they are not in a position to be able to do all this. So, <sighs> so yeah, 
the next thing, still was going to stay, I said, stay on this whole layoffs thing because this is super awesome stuff to talk about. Um, next up, this is an article that came out today, actually, probably just a couple hours ago. Uh, this one says Activision Blizzard says job cuts could have potential possible negative impact on financial performance. So, uh, and Reinhardt actually linked this to me too. So uh, this is, this was making the rounds. Um, so publishing giant Activision Blizzard has said that there is a potential, there is the potential for the 8% of workforce cut uh, call that it announced last month to have a negative impact on its business. Um, so this is, so when it, whenever they, whenever they file um, with the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, they have to disclose anything that might impact their uh their earnings potential in the future right like anything and so it could be well we don't really have any properties we're working on so we're probably going to see a decline because our current games are aging uh so you know we're probably but we do have this and we have this whatever so they're basically outlining as many things as possible so that investors could be as informed as they possibly can this is just one of those things that goes on a list where it's like Oh, by the way, so, and I'll read this verbatim here. Um, da, 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 da. So furthermore, the publisher has said that the cuts could actually negatively impact its, biz its business. It says Activision Blizz Blizzard also says that the cuts could be costly, lead to other employees leaving, and have a negative impact on the productivity and morale of staff. So they're, they're literally saying, because we laid all these people off, well, other people might be kind of sad productivity might be hurt because of it. So our results next quarter might not be where they're supposed to be. While they have to add everything, right? They're kind of obligated to put everything in, uh, into this list so they can inform their investors. <laughs> it also kind of feels like they're saying these sad motherfuckers are just like being babies. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably going to hurt us later on. You know, we got all these sad people working for us. We had to let these dudes go. Oh, you know, sad. You know, their productivity's down. It's just, it's just, it's just what they, it feels like that, but I'm, 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 I'm trying to frame this so you guys can see that it is just something they have to put in. It's just, it's funny in a not funny way that, that they actually have to detail this, <laughs> but they have to, <laughs> they fucking have to, they have to report all this shit. A uh, healthy industry is healthy. Either you have money to squirt away on non-happening projects or you are perpetually a dying business. Yeah. Um, our Diablo team may decide to mass quit and form another suit. Well, actually, there was a note. Uh, there was a note that uh, they actually did finish Diablo Immortal. So Diablo Immortal is done. And I guess we're just waiting for a release date on that. So for those of you guys who are waiting for that, woo -woo, I'll probably play it, honestly. Um, but yeah. Um, morale, morale is down. Productivity is down. Uh, did I say morale? <laughs> morale is down, productivity is down, and people will leave. Well, duh, exactly. Well, golly gee, it's always like the public is a bit upset that 800 people lost their jobs, but the higher-ups are getting multi-million dollar signing bonuses. I know it's not normal for them. Oh, sorry, I know it's normal for them to get those bonuses, but the public isn't with Activision Blizzard. It's true. It's true. I actually canceled my WoW subscription this morning because I just remembered that I actually still have it, and I haven't played it in a while. So I actually canceled it this morning because I was just like... And I actually wrote I wrote in the... Uh, uh, why are you, you know, discontinuing your... Your, uh, uh, your, your subscription. And I wrote, I said that I am displeased with the uh, business practices of, of Activision Blizzard lately. Uh, that's all I wrote. I didn't write anything crazy because I don't think they're, I don't think they're ever going to like look at it. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, right? Hundreds of thousands of people cancel their subscriptions every fucking day. They don't give a shit um, what, what somebody says. But, uh, but I mean, I'm not saying that I'm boycotting them. I'm just saying right now they don't need my money. Um, but when, when classic comes around, I'll, I'll probably be back at the boat. Uh, Blizzard decided to police the community to be Silicon Valley morality compliant. Then wonder why so many people get turned off who don't live in the USA. I, I, well, what do you mean by that, of course? Uh, Jalen Brad got an email, you unsubbed. <laughs> You're just going to reach out. Uh, they just fired the people that would be reading those reports. Oh my God, Teddy, that's exactly what happened. Jesus Christ. Uh, yes, no, no, yeah, no, no sympathy for them. I, I already know my money is going to, you know, <laughs> You know, it's like, it's like one of those things where it's like, if you, when you go to buy something on like Humble Bundle or whatever, and you've got like a slider and you could say, okay, I want to slide this, sli slide this over, give a little bit more to the developer, a little more to a charity, or a little more to Humble Bundle, right? You have the little meters you kind of move around. 
I, I wish there was something that would show up with like my, you know, $15 wow sub. If I look at a $15 wow sub, will I see, like, can I, can I see how, what percentage of that goes to, you know, each department? I know it's not, that'll never happen, of course. Well, I can't say never, but, uh, it'll pretty much never happen. <laughs> so, so yeah, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just, um, it's not surprising I had to put that, put that in there. It's just, it's just bad optics that they put it in there. And I'm sure some of there's like super upset about that. Uh, but yeah, they had to put it in. That's just, that's all her business. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, this is actually completely related to all. This is why I want to tie in all these stories together because this last thing is actually a thread by Jonathan Blow. Do you guys know who Jonathan Blow is? Um, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. He's a game developer, right? Uh, he's uh, uh, one of the, I guess, one of the original, like, um, uh, like big indie developers. Uh, they they made the Witness. Uh, Thekla is his company that works that that he owns. Uh, they made the Witness and uh, they made Braid. Surely you know Braid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember saying Braid. Um, he is. He's he. You could say he's outspoken. He's um, he's really fucking smart. Like. He, like when you he's a developer first and foremost foremost right he's a very and he's an engineering like his brain is definitely wired for engineering so uh i'm i know that in the past he said some pretty i guess some pretty uh abrasive things or whatever but i have a feeling this is just kind of like the way that he operates i don't i can't tell you what he said or whatever but you know when you look at some of the some of these uh, uh these early really popular game devs from like 2009 2008 whatever think like uh um, a Phil Fish, right? <laughs> you think about those like those OG like you know big indie developers that really fucking made it big. Um, that's one of those things that you know it's 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 you you kind of associate some of these guys together. Uh, but I mean, like some of the stuff that he talks about is really really interesting. I follow him on Twitter. Um, you guys remember Kenzie, right? Uh, Kenzie from uh, uh, Final Fantasy fourteen show, Game Breaker, all that. Uh, so she's a really good friend of mine. Her and I go way back before the games thing. Um, she actually works. Uh, she works with Jonathan Blow. There, there, there. I don't know what her exact position is, but like she works directly with him, like exclusively. Um, and like she tells me a little bit about 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 him as a person, and everything. And I get it. Like I, I, I get it. Like he's he is one of those um, uh, like almost purely intellectual types. You know, and like like somebody said, it's like he made the witness. That's that's saying enough. Yeah, like the the puzzles and things that are in that game. <laughs> so, anyways, he wrote this he wrote this thread uh, that I thought was super interesting. He later deleted it, but there's a Google cache of it, and it's not incriminating or anything. He probably deleted honestly. He probably deleted it because uh, it was ill timed. He wrote on February fourth, and then shortly after this is when we got started getting all these layoffs and everything. He probably felt pretty bad, ended up going through and deleting it. But I think it's like perfect to talk about right now. Uh, so I'll read it to you guys. He says, once in a while in speeches, I mentioned that it's easy to observe that engineers uh, in these giant web companies have historically low productivity. Amount of functional output divided by engineer year is abysmal. There are just crazy numbers of engineers at these companies. Considering what they do, the, considering what they do, uh, the companies just grow and grow because they are riding this massive wave of software creating efficiencies. The cost of missing an opportunity is tremendously higher than the cost of being inefficient, but there is a downside that will come. Eventually, when the amount of easy money is not so tremendous, these companies will turn their eyes towards efficiency of production. As always, as always happens, expect many, many programmers in domains like the web to become unemployed. I don't know, 50 to 80%. This won't happen immediately. It will be a long and slow decline as the disaster that is the web gets cleaned up. And he's talking about just like, just web functions in general, right? Like just creating uh, you know, web apps, whatever, just like general stuff. Uh, but this absolutely like, also applies to game dev. Uh, he says, I, I I always call trends way too early, which I thought was hilarious because this happened like, because all the layoffs are happening like two weeks later. Um, so it may be 10 years before this process really begins, but once it does, it will cast a very different light on ideas like everyone should learn to code. I think it makes sense to say that like, say, say that like we used to say, everyone should know how to change the tire on their car. But if you're saying anyone could learn to code as in providing a zillion jobs for the future, I'm not sure that's a thing. Probably there will be some very simple visual system like Unreal's blueprints that people can learn in college, 
but we won't think of these people as programmers by profession. They will be whatever profession they are otherwise. And just know and just know how to open up the scripting panel in whatever software they use and connect things in uh, uh, connect things the right way. It won't be a separate job usually. Um, so, I wonder if John knows is a twit longer. I think I think threads for these is actually a little bit better because twit longer. Like, what if the post like? Oh well, I don't know. I I kind of like the the this format personally. Twit longer is hard to read. It's like a like just a big ass wall of shit. Anyways, so. What I think is interesting about about what he said here, outside of how it applies currently to uh, uh, to to what's happening now, I know it's not exact, right? Like we're not. I'm not saying that all these layoffs that have occurred in the past, you know, uh, six or sixty days or so, right, uh, have been oh, it's developers that they're laying off. No, we know it's we know it's a combination of things. Uh, but he's right. If you ever worked for a uh, for any company that has any kind of like development, usually. You have, let's say you have like 10 engineers, right? Usually there's like two of them that are doing a really good job and pretty much doing mm, 80% of the work, right? And this happens everywhere. So now you have like all of these developers that are on payroll and you have two guys that are basically pretty much doing everything. And eventually you're going to run into the problem where it's like, okay, now I need to get into efficiency of productivity and I need to figure out how to... Uh, how to trim the fat, like from a financial perspective, we need to figure out how to like trim and, and actually make this stuff work. And so then you go through and you start cutting programmers and everything uh, until, and hopefully you don't cut the ones that are doing all the, all the work and doing everything correctly. Um, and it's making the 80, 20, it applies everywhere. Yeah, totally. It applies everywhere. Uh, but right now, you know, it's like the, the games industry is getting tons of money. We know this the games industry is getting shitloads of money just hand over fist just making so much money uh eventually it's gonna it's gonna even out like the, it's gonna make there's gonna be enough people in the game uh that are going to be making money that 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 money is not going to like the amount of money we have right now is being funneled into like the big five right uh and so as more people will start to get involved in video games, which everybody is, uh, then that money is, it doesn't mean that that money is growing to, to meet the demands uh, or meet the supply that's given. And so what's going to have happening is you know, less money is going to be going towards each individual uh, you know, game studio for whatever game they have. We actually see this uh, as, as a community with like Steam. Remember when like uh, when Early Access and uh, um, Greenlight, when Greenlight was introduced? And then all of a sudden, like your your Steam front page went from one game, one one game featured every three days to like 50 fucking games every day because games are just releasing like that. And suddenly, like imagine if Meat Boy was, was released today, right? Obviously, as a game mechanically, it may not necessarily register like you know resonate as it did back then, but still, that's a game that's good. But because there's so many other games, so many people already doing all this stuff, you actually, you, you, it's watered down. You end up not getting uh, the amount of money that you had. Um, yeah, it's hard to compete for everyone's money. Uh, I feel like that Nintendo Pay article that just hit today applies to this too. I didn't see that, but I'm willing to bet it probably does. Um, every industry goes through the process like that. Everyone just used, uh, just used to that happening in the manual industries. Yes, yes. That is, and that, that's the thing. It's like, and he mentions it here. Eventually, you have to. Eventually, we will reach parity in cost of production to actual value of what's produced. Right? Does that make sense? Where like, okay, the amount of money that I'm spending on making the game is actually getting reimbursed by the amount of money I'm making on the game based off of my current, like our, our current economy. Uh, but with with the way that it's happening now, where you're basically getting like, like I said, ten engineers. And you have only like two of them that really know what they're doing, and more and more people are getting into game dev. And as more people get into getting interested in and actually learning how to get into get into get into game dev, they will uh, they're going to saturate the market. And so, like he's saying, is like eventually we're going to see like massive layoffs. And I I I totally believe this is actually going to happen too. Like it, I, I I read this and I was just like, damn, like it's true. It's just like every other industry. The automotive industry is the same way. It's like you have people, you have like thousands of people working at, at the Chrysler factory in northern Indiana, <laughs> excuse me, and suddenly redundancies happen because of efficiencies and productivity. And so what happens is now, okay, well, I had 10 people that are working on this, per this particular part of the line, but I only need three of them now. Excuse me. 
This is this is something that happens in every industry. Uh, I don't know if I don't know how like the mechanics of it works in terms of like if you think about it from like okay when automotive in, when the automotive industry was blowing up were people were people going en masse to school specifically to go work at a factory I don't know what those numbers look like versus now where it feels like everybody's trying to get into game dev even people who are not related to game dev at all as a company right are trying to kind of get in there somehow with like an app uh, or um or, or fucking whatever right it's like think of like any any non uh mcdonald's mcdonald's is a food service you know uh, uh, uh franchise right they have a game app that, th that they have, right? They have an app where you can actually scan the little toys you get from your uh, Happy Meal or whatever. You guys get Happy Meal still, right? Um, and they can, and so they now have a game. They're technically in the games industry. You see, everybody's trying to get in. Um, it's kind of like the theories of the game industry collapse, oversaturate, implode, and slowly reboot. Yeah. But the thing is, like, are we going to, and this is, this is all, this is all, like, we're just theorizing right now, right? This is conspiracy theory central right now. Uh, how is it going to happen? Is it going to be like the dot-com burst? Is it going to be like the housing burst? Is it going to, or is it going to be, are we going to somehow, somehow, instead of crashing, are we going to somehow reach parity with, with the actual value of product that we get? Um... I have a feeling it's gonna, it's definitely gonna go up and then kind of dive and then probably do this as every industry ends up doing. But uh, the problem, auto industry had unions, so they end up having money problems. So why don't we talk about that? Actually, um, everybody is pushing for unions, right? I, 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 I believe that unions are inherently good, but I've seen them do some shitty things living in the Bay Area. Um, a union to protect games industry folks could be great in the short term but as you mentioned having a union where you know from from in the auto industry and 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 my so first off just so you guys know my 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 grandmother and my dad uh work at the used to work at the chrysler factory um that i mentioned uh, that was in uh, northern indiana i think they moved actually to like uh, chicago or something like that um so i i kind of have some insight into this stuff just knowing how they like, what their lives were like and everything um but yeah union is huge in these like manual labor industries and as as the uh, the efficiency or productivity happens right streamlining the process all that stuff starts to occur then the union is protecting these people and which is great you want to protect these people you want to get them to retirement and all that uh, but the company's not making the money to support that. Uh, it's just, it's it's one of those things that could go either way. If we get a union right now for games industry folks, when we don't have anywhere near any kind of fucking balance in, in, in actually paying to make the game versus the money we're getting back, like, I feel like that's potentially even more of a disaster. Right now, right now, I view working in the games industry as somebody who has... <laughs> as a seasonal job whenever somebody gets in uh i try to refrain from saying this now but uh i used to say this to folks before i started working as am uh that the turnaround time when you're working at a game company is like two years it's like if someone's like oh i got a job at this game company i just think two years like that, that's usually where it's like it's a seasonal job right like a seasonal if you were to say a season lasts two years right uh it's just not something that you're you're not going to go and work for a game dev company and retire statistically you're not going to go work for a game dev company and retire you always over hire they always over hire and they always have to trim things up when eventually the products they're making don't don't pan out uh, my dad hated unions because they take money from his paycheck uh i missed part of this uh and uses to support politicians as alike oh yeah yes that's true yeah that's the other thing too um you just get bogged unions get bogged down my lawyers part of the problem in the, is in the bay area your mayor alone makes more money than the state's governor <laughs> I don't. I actually. I, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, game studios need to get back to games, ba games based gameplay instead of uh, spending money on hype and polish. You know, it's funny because that's true. There was actually a meme that somebody draw that somebody uh, shared on Twitter. Uh, it was a fresh one too. I never seen it. It was basically just showed. It's like um, all the hype is wild. The announcement leading up to like to actual release and then when it's released it's like i sleep i think that's what it said i sleep it was like oh that's fucking perfect it's so true um the problem with games cost is uh more more the amount of money wasted on marketing apex knew this and bypassed it 
Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Ape Apex did a good job of saving money on marketing for sure. Uh, it's frustrating to me that the web and game development industries are still stuck on the idea of physical offices. Fuck, you see. And Kins and I used to work together. That's the reason why you fucking left, uh, particularly in SF, LA, et cetera. It's 100% viable to have 100% remote team and have hugely lower overhead, but people can't see past not having someone at a desk you can just walk over to. Funny you mentioned that too, actually. Jonathan Blow did an interview in 2017 where he was talking about deep focus. Um, he said that what he would, is he said that, that as an engineer, you know, when you're, when you're, you know, as a programmer, uh, you're, you're trying to like visualize very like intricate and detailed scenarios that you're trying to build for. And you have to really kind of go into like a deep focus in order to get that. Right. And if, if those of you guys are programmers, which I know there's a lot of you guys are, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. If you're if you're at a desk in a in a cubicle in an office, part of your brain is still is is always going to be taxed thinking someone's going to bug me, someone's going to bug me, someone's going to bug me, and you're not going to be able to get into that deep focus state of mind where you can really be uh, uh, productive and efficient at what it is you're doing. And this doesn't just apply to like to programmers necessarily. This applies to just about everybody. I, I'm the same way from like an art perspective. Like I just need to be left the fuck alone so that way I can work on, you know, getting into that creative mindset and really, really, really digging into these ideas I'm trying to come up with for things. And if I know, if I'm here, and this is part of my productivity issue when I have like making content for like various things like YouTube, Twitch and all that stuff. If I'm here and I have like my mother-in-law sleeping in the next fucking room right there in the middle of the day i find it hard sometimes to 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 actually get into like really get into something um but yeah so so it's i mean it's funny you mentioned that because uh, john the blow actually talked about that uh, a couple years ago and it totally makes sense uh let's see wait uh everyone can see the usa games industry coming to a crash they're out of touch and pushing politics like gameplay you can't make money if you don't give people what they want i'll, I'll partially agree with you on that uh corpse um yeah, I partially agree with you on that. I feel, but but also know that if, if our if our games industry crashes, that affects everybody. Uh, it is there's a massive impact. Except for StarCraft, will be fine. StarCraft will be totally fine. Um, as a network, a network engineer, I can agree. Yeah, you can apply the same thing to working at home. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, working at home and being out context switching. But what do some people say? Uh, I've heard that they said that if you're interrupted, it takes 15 minutes to actually get back on task. Uh, this is something that I heard back when I was working a real job. Um, and it's true, right? I, mean, I don't know if that exact time is true. You can't really set a clock to it. But there's a lot of times if you're like really working on something and someone comes over and is like, oh, hey, so, yeah, I'm going to need you to come in this week. And like you're, you're now you're now bothered and you have to get you know, you have to get out of that state of mind and then get back into that state of mind and really start working on things. Every job has that one Janice or Phil that has to come and ruin the day for you. It's true. Uh, when doing maintenance and I have a big job to do, uh, when the boss or coworkers constantly come in and ask questions, cause me to stop. At the end of the day, they look around and wonder why I got nothing done. Yep. Uh, open offices are a pain. Dude, open offices are so confused. I think it's cool, right, to have an open office, but I don't understand how people in some of these industries can tolerate that. To constantly feel like somebody's able to see you and watch you, I feel like, okay, I don't, I don't know if that's something I can really do. I, I am sometimes the most productive when I have something going on on a second screen, and I know you guys are the same way. I fucking know you guys are the same way. Last night, I'm working on picture. I have, I have a photo shoot of Lindsay that I'm editing, right? I have photo shoot of Lindsay on this screen over here, working on those photos, one punch man on the other screen, right? I can't do that in office environment. Like, there's a lot of offices that'll be like, no, look at Lack, uh, Lack, you know, Discord mom, uh, Lack Tardis. She, she's got the same issue, uh, or I don't know if she still has, but like, I think they weren't even allowed to have headphones or something like that. And it's just like, what the fuck? Like, you can't even, like, you can't even block out the sounds of your shitty neighbors <laughs> like give me a break but it's it's yeah it's just one of those things i don't understand why especially into with today's technology like kitten said it's like why can't we all just work from home uh years of work at emer an emergency in an emergency department trained me to do my best work under pressure with many interruptions but not all types of work flourish in that environment it's true and some people do flourish with that like they can actually be bothered and everything and, and uh, be able to uh, work on things um Open office is countered by headphones, which reduce the benefits of supposed collaboration and cruise. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's true. In an open office environment where you're like, oh, this is a great collaborative environment, literally everybody's sitting there with headphones on, not able to hear anything you're saying. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, they do have their place sometimes, but you can just turn around and ask someone to do a thing, ask for help. I have my own office, but some of our engineers, you know, what's interesting about that. Uh, my wife works in an open office environment and granted they've, they've, they've been working together for like 15 years or something crazy. They've been working together for a long time. Uh, but still it's still an open office environment. They communicate almost exclusively through Slack. And they're all in this, like, you know, this, this open environment where, where like, like you would think, oh, this is so that they could turn around and ask a question to somebody or whatever. Uh, it's just, but they still communicate via Slack. And so that's the thing for me. It's like, well, I understand if somebody's doing like maybe customer service stuff or whatever, where you don't necessarily need to get into, I mean, sometimes you troubleshoot some pretty difficult issues from a customer service perspective for sure. But yeah, I don't know. Open office environment is just crazy. When I worked as a customer service rep, um, I was, uh, I was in a cubicle, like a half wall cubicle type thing. And that was great. I had like a private corner. I felt like I was kind of tucked away. I can't imagine working in an open environment like that. Just can't do it. Uh, the reason why US dev scene will crash is because other dev markets like Japan will give people what they want. The USA will crash only hurt USA studios. Yeah. I, 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 I totally get what you're saying. I totally get what you're saying. Um, that is, it, it is. I can't really comment on whether or not like that's actually going to happen, but I get it. I totally get it. Like there are some games that have been basically neutered because of whatever social pressure that they caved into. And it's like, Oh cool. That game I really liked has been totally changed because of this group of folks who probably won't even buy the fucking game. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll just make different games instead. Uh, offices need dogs to deliver messages in between cubicles. Of course. Of course. I shared an office with the best coworker that was still in New York, but the girl just sat outside our door burst into combos and was like the worst oh yeah that's terrible that is terrible um being able to put on rob zombie while i'm working increases my productivity for sure yes ex yes 100 percent. i actually wonder if lax still is not allowed to have headphones uh <laughs> i think her story was like she got an email or something like that it was like oh, i just want to remind everybody about the no headphone policy it's like what get the fuck out no way you could do that no way you could do that just just terrible uh, so that is actually it. Unfortunately, we don't have a Soldier Boy weekly update. I'm really, I looked. There was just nothing really worth talking about. No Soldier Boy weekly update. I know I'm using the chat. No, uh, no update this week. Hopefully next week. I really, this is my, this is my first, it's my first uh, soundboard sample. I really, I know, I don't know why, I didn't want to tell you guys ahead of time because I know you guys would have left and I really didn't want that to happen. I was trying to lead you guys on. I apologize for leading you guys on. I know you guys understand that sometimes, sometimes shit just doesn't happen. Uh, so, <laughs> I tricked you bitches. <laughs> Fingers go, first soldier boy. Yes, yes. So, uh, all right. But that's it, boycotting the show. <laughs> I totally let you guys on. It's God, it's done. Uh, all right, guys. That's it. Thank you so much for tuning in for the news. Uncle Chat, thank you guys for hanging out and uh, taking part in this. I really like the, love these discussions. Um, is his shop? His shop is still up. It is. Next week, I will not be doing a show. My wife is getting a hysterectomy on Wednesday and she will be recovering uh, over that time. So I will be out of uh, office uh, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and probably some of the following week just to attend to her and make sure that she is comfortable and has plenty of whatever I'm allowed to give her while she's uh, resting and recovering in the hospital. So so, so I will uh, keep you guys abreast on that. And I will obviously keep, keep track of whatever news happens to come my way. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys there.